Line number 43 to 50. Madam Sosostris, famous clairvoyant, had a bad cold, nevertheless, is known to be the wisest woman in Europe. With a wicked pack of cards. Here, said she, is your card, the drowned Phoenician sailor. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Look, closing parenthesis. Here is Belladonna, the lady of the rocks. The lady of situations. Explanation. They introduce the character of Madame Sosostris, a famous clairvoyant who is known to be the wisest woman in Europe. Despite having a bad cold, Madame Sosostris is said to possess a wicked pack of cards, which she uses to divine the future. The cards that Madame Sosostris draws for the speaker are significant. The first card is the drowned Phoenician sailor, which suggests a sense of loss and despair. The description of pearls that were his eyes is a reference to Shakespeare's play, The Tempest, in which the character of Ferdinand says of his drowned father, full fathom five thy father lies, of his bones are coral made, those are pearls that were his eyes. This reference adds to the sense of loss and suggests that the sailor's death is a metaphor for the death of culture and tradition. The second card is Belladonna, the lady of the rocks, the lady of situations. Belladonna is a poisonous plant that has hallucinogenic properties. The reference to Belladonna adds to the sense of unease and suggests that the future that Madame Sosostris sees is dark and dangerous. Overall, these lines introduce the theme of divination and the idea that the future is uncertain and potentially dangerous. The imagery of the drowned sailor and Belladonna adds to the sense of loss and unease, while the character of Madame Sosostris suggests that people are searching for guidance and insight in an uncertain world. Line number 51 to 59. Here is the man with three staves, and here the wheel. And here is the one-eyed merchant, and this card, which is blank, is something he carries on his back, which I am forbidden to see. I do not find the hanged man, fear death by water. I see crowds of people, walking round in a ring. Thank you. If you see dear Mrs. Ekitone, tell her I bring the horoscope myself. One must be so careful these days. Explanation the speaker continues to describe the cards that Madame Sosostris draws for him, and the significance of each card. The man with three staves is likely a reference to the tarot card of the Three of Wands, which can represent enterprise, trade, and partnership. The wheel is another tarot card that represents the cyclical nature of life, with ups and downs and the potential for both good and bad fortune. The one-eyed merchant is an interesting figure, as the image of someone with only one eye suggests a lack of depth perception or a limited view of the world. This may be a commentary on the limitations of human perception and the difficulty of seeing the world clearly. The blank card that the merchant carries on his back is mysterious and suggests that there are unknown forces at work in the world. The fact that the speaker is forbidden from seeing it adds to the sense of secrecy and hidden knowledge. The reference to the hanged man is significant, as this is a tarot card that represents sacrifice and surrender. The suggestion to fear death by water adds to the sense of foreboding and suggests that water is a symbol of danger and uncertainty. The final lines, in which the speaker asks Madame Sosostris to deliver a horoscope to Mrs. Echidone, suggest a desire for knowledge and guidance in a chaotic and uncertain world. The idea that, one must be so careful these days, adds to the sense of paranoia and suggests that people are aware of the dangers that surround them. Line number 60 to 65. Unreal City. Under the brown fog of a winter dawn, a crowd flowed over London Bridge, so many. I had not thought death had undone so many. Sighs, short and infrequent, were exhaled. And each man fixed his eyes before his feet. Flowed up the hill and down King William Street. Explanation. The speaker describes a scene in London at dawn, with a large crowd flowing over London Bridge. The city is described as an unreal city, which suggests a sense of unreality or disconnection from reality. The brown fog of winter adds to the sense of dreariness and decay. The line, I had not thought death had undone so many, suggests that the crowd on the bridge is made up of the dead or the dying, and that the speaker is surprised by the number of people who have been affected by death. This line sets the tone for the rest of the poem, which explores themes of decay, death, and spiritual emptiness. The sighs that are described as, short and infrequent, suggest a sense of resignation or despair, as if the people in the crowd have given up hope. The fact that each man, fixed his eyes before his feet, suggests a sense of isolation and disconnection from others, as if each person is lost in their own thoughts and worries.
The final lines, which describe the crowd flowing up the hill and down King William Street, add to the sense of aimlessness and uncertainty. The city is described as a maze, with no clear direction or purpose. This sense of disorientation and confusion is a recurring theme in the poem, as the speaker explores the ways in which people have lost their way in the modern world. Line number 66 to 76. To where St. Mary Woolnoth kept the hours. With a dead sound on the final stroke of nine. There I saw one I knew, and stopped him, crying, Stetson. You who were with me in the ships at Miley. That corpse you planted last year in your garden. Has it begun to sprout? Will it bloom this year? Or has the sudden frost disturbed its bed? Oh keep the dog far hence, that's friend to men. Or with his nails he'll dig it up again. You, hypocrite lector, mon semblable, mon frere. Quote. Explanation. The speaker describes walking to St. Mary Woolnuth Church and hearing the clock strike nine with a dead sound on the final stroke. The reference to the church and its bell suggests a connection to religion and the passing of time. The speaker then sees someone he knows, named Stetson, and stops him to ask about a corpse that he planted in his garden. This reference to death and decay is a recurring theme in the poem. The speaker asks if the corpse has started to sprout or if the sudden frost has disturbed its bed. This is a metaphor for the idea of rebirth or renewal, but also suggests the futility of trying to revive something that is dead. The line, oh keep the dog far hence, that's friend to men, or with his nails he'll dig it up again, refers to the mythological figure of Cerberus, the three-headed dog that guards the entrance to the underworld in Greek mythology. The dog is a symbol of death and the underworld, and the speaker warns against disturbing the dead. The final line, you, hypocrite lector, mon semblable, mon frere, is a direct address to the reader, accusing them of hypocrisy and suggesting a sense of shared experience or brotherhood. This line is a reference to Charles Baudelaire's poem, O Lector, which similarly addresses the reader in a confrontational way. Overall, these lines continue the poem's exploration of death and decay, and suggest a sense of hopelessness and futility in the face of mortality. The reference to religion and mythology also adds to the sense of spirituality and the unknown, as the speaker struggles to find meaning in a world that seems to be falling apart.